Hello people! I'm Jenny Metherill, I am a fourth generation witch. Today's video is my ever popular almanac series, welcome! This is where I look at what witchcraft you can do on witch days during the month of April. So as always with these videos, what I like to do is to give you a general overview of the witchcraft trends that are happening throughout the month of April. And then we'll look at the nitty gritty day to day detail and watch witchcraft you can do when. So with that said, let's start with our overview. Now, today's overview is a little different. It came about because for the last few weeks, every single person, be they client, family, friend, distant acquaintance, anybody, in fact, that I have spoken with and asked them, you know, how they are, what they've been up to, everyone has said, oh, it's been awful. It's been so dreadful. And I've been then looking at my own particular circumstances and they haven't been the best. Little difficult here and there. So what is going on? Why is the whole world in a period of doom and gloom. So I asked my spirit guides. And so my spirit guides, first of all, just said, go and look to the heavens. And so I did. And this is what I found. On March the 23rd, Pluto entered into Aquarius. Now, this doesn't really mean that much to me. I'm not an astrologer, although I can understand the basic principles of it. However, this hasn't happened for 200 years, and Pluto is a transformer. It means that we're having a cosmic reset. Now, as much as the moon will hugely impact upon our natures, the sea, any water on this planet, Likewise, even if you don't believe in astrology, the impact that a massive planet like Jupiter or Saturn can have via their gravitational pull on us mere mortals down on Earth is extant. So it's a bit like when you have a kitchen cupboard and you think, oh, I'll clear up that kitchen cupboard. And what you do is you go in and you take everything out of that kitchen cupboard and you wipe out the insides and then you turn around and there's a massive mess. You start going through the mess and putting everything back neatly. And then you discover some terrible things that are occurring in the pots that you've taken out, like they should have been thrown away 20 years previously. Well, this is a bit like the cosmic reset that we are having. When I looked into this, it makes perfect sense. I bet you that all of you out there are going through a little bit of a hard time. Everything seems to be going wrong. There's things and events happening because these need to happen in order to reset our world. And this reset, unfortunately, takes a little time. The whole of April is going to be taken up with this. And most of May, until about May the 15th, when Jupiter, the planet of luck, abundance, fertility, wealth and general good stuff, comes into alignment again. The last time this reset happened um, with Pluto, we had the American Civil War and the French Revolution. So, there is going to be a better outcome after all this has happened. It just takes a while for all this to happen. So sorry about that. It's a bit of a rubbish intro to the month, isn't it? When I looked at this, I did appeal to the spirit guide, you know, what this period of transformation meant. And they said, all periods of transformation are incredibly disruptive and bring up all sorts of rubbish to the fore. And so we just have to live with it. Good luck. I suggest you do a calming spell, cast a circle, stand in the circle, bring calming energies into you so that you can ride the storm. Finally, for this introduction, I just wanted to let you know about a willow. April is the time for willow. It is when it comes into bud, into flower. Willow is one of the first trees in leaf. Now, April is the traditional time for witches to make wands from willow. So should you be passing a stand of willow, please do feel free to go and cut some wands from the tree. Asking the tree its permission, of course, 
as well, you can do some wish magic with willow. If, so if you take your willow tree and tie a knot into one of the branches, making your wish as you do. When the wish has come true, though, be very, very careful to remember, unlike me, to take the knot out of the willow, because otherwise this will upset the fae and they might tamper with your wish. So that is my rather upsetting overview for the month of April. It's not great, is it? You can make your willow wands, however, which is always fun. I love a willow wand. They're lovely and flicky. And so they're great for um, fast growing and abundant spells because that's the energy that they hold in them. So having done the overview, let's now look at the nitty gritty days. And of course, we start with the 1st of April. And for those of you who weren't born in a rock, this is, of course, April Fool's Day. Now, April Fool's Day is simply a day where you play pranks on each other. It has been going on for several hundreds of years, um, more than we think most likely. It was normally considered the day that you sent people out on errands, which were pointless. So you might send them to go and find or buy some hen's teeth or a book about the mother of Eve, uh, who, of course, doesn't exist because I think that's God in the Christian faith. The Christians claim this is the day that Noah sent out his first dove from the ark on the great flood to check for land. And of course, the dove came back and there was nothing. There's nothing at all. There's no land. And so therefore, this was a fool's errand for him. However, who knows? But beware, should you carry out a prank on somebody else after midday, you become the fool. So take note of that. The 6th of April is the night of the full moon. There are lots of names for this full moon. The pink moon, the budding moon, the green shoots moon. But I like the Anglo-Saxon egg moon because, of course, April is when we're completely inundated with eggs. Everybody and their mother is a laying at the moment. The full moon this year is in Libra, and as you know, each full moon brings its own energies. Libra is all about connections and clarity within your relationships, and so should you wish to really understand what's going on in somebody else's life, or not, as the case may be, depending on how bad it is, and so you can do a great relationship spell on this full moon, or the moon water that you make is great for use in emotional rituals. The 7th of April is known in the Christian faith as Good Friday, part of their Easter celebrations. Now, on Good Friday in the UK, we used to eat the traditional hot cross bun, which is just a spiced bun by any other name. And the hot cross bun has a lot of superstitions going with it. Some of these superstitions have obviously been annexed from some older traditions. So I'm going to tell you about them. Should you bake some hot cross buns, what you need to do is take one of those hot cross buns and hang it up in your kitchen. Tradition states it will never go mouldy, and actually they don't tend to go mouldy. I think that's because of all the sugar and spices that help preserve the buns that are in them. Now, if you then have a digestive complaint throughout the year, you can grate some of that disgusting, hard, old, not mouldy hot cross bun that's hanging from your ceiling and put it in some hot water and drink it and it will cure it. I don't recommend that. Please don't try it. It sounds revolting. However, by hanging up your hot cross bun, you will ensure that for the rest of the year, your bread will rise. Your boats will not be shipwrecked. And most importantly of all, your house will not burn down. So what can I say apart from have a go? The Widow's Son's Pub in East London has a great tradition for this. And should you wish to go and see them do it and are in London, I would recommend it. Sounds like a fab ceremony to go and look at. This leads us on to the 14th of April, which is known as Easter Sunday. Now, I'm not really going to go into Easter Sunday today in this video, because obviously it was a massively pagan festival, two varying spring goddesses. And so I will release a pagan Easter video in due course. So watch out for that. So moving on, the 14th of April. And this is one of my favourite days of the year, because it means that spring is really here. It is apparently the day that the cuckoos start calling, although they have 
called a bit earlier last year. And as of course you all know, the cuckoo comes in April. It sings its song in May. By the end of June, it changes your tune and July it flies away. Now cuckoos are highly superstitious birds and very prolific in egg laying. They can lay 50 eggs up to in a season, which I think is quite a lot. If you hear a cuckoo calling for the first time in the year, especially on this day, count the number of calls it makes because that is the number of years you either have left to live, left to get married or to have that many children. However, I do like to hear the cuckoo's call. The 20th of April has the new moon rising in Aries. New moons have new energies depending on the star sign that they go through and Aries is all about courage and strength. So should you wish to do some new moon rituals for courage and strength, today is perfect for that. It is also the day when there is a solar eclipse. Remember what I said in the introduction about the cosmos resetting itself. Solar eclipses are often seen as a sign of things being reset. It is an ending and a beginning. The sun can be born again after its totality and renewed. However, this solar eclipse you can only see in the southern hemisphere. You can't see it in the northern hemisphere, but it is a strange one. It's a hybrid one. So it goes through different stages of different types of solar eclipse. I don't really understand it. I haven't looked into it because it's not happening near me and therefore selfishly I've decided not to bother with it. However, a solar eclipse and a new moon is always signs that something is afoot. The 22nd of April is when the Lyrid meteor shower is at its peak. And this is a beautiful meteor shower. It's got excellent trails and you can see up to, I think they say, 40 meteors an hour, should you so care to look. What do you do when you see a shooting star? You, of course, make a wish upon it. This brings us round quickly to the 23rd of April. 23rd of April is St George's Day, the patron saint of the UK. Now, there's a lot of guff written about St George. Historically, yes, he was a character that uh, arose in Asia Minor and um, killed dragons around that part of the world. But there's so many traditions about St George in this country. My favourite is that there is Dragon's Hill in Uffington in Oxfordshire, which is where St George slayed the dragon. And when he slayed the dragon, the blood from the dragon was so poisonous that it killed all the grass and all the growth on top of this hill. And this you can still see today. rather charming and is it I love St George he was always one of my favorites he was blatantly a wizard because he went around slaying dragons and if you follow the traditional folk tale of it he used a blue girdle which is a belt from a young maiden that's quite wizardy isn't it so we like St George St George is actually said to have been buried at a site in Warwickshire. And he was buried at a crossroads where he had a stake through his heart. And this stake then grew up into a massive elm tree. In Shakespeare's day, which is the 1600s, this elm tree was considered old then. And it lasted until the 1950s, whereupon it suffered great fire damage. I'm not quite sure how. I can't find any evidence to tell me whether it was lightning or it was set alight. And it died. The elm that grew above St George's grave was said to bleed red blood and this was tested by a professor of Oxford in the 1920s I believe. He went and cut the bark from the tree and it did ooze red sap out. Magical in the extreme I think you'll find. St George's Day otherwise is the day to pick your dandelions as long as they have been bathed in the sunshine that day and make your dandelion wine. Now dandelion wine is full of the gloriousness of spring and so will help you come to Nirvana or wherever you'd like to go to by Midsummer's Eve, which is when you drink it. 24th of April is St Mark's Eve. Now this is one of the major divination nights of the year, meaning that should you wish to know who you are going to marry, you could go to a graveyard and pluck 
some grass therein, place that grass underneath your pillow and you will have prophetic dreams about your future partner. Yeah, sounds a bit dubious to me. I think I'd rather place other things underneath my pillow to divine my future partner. Otherwise, it is the night where you should be able to go to the porch of your parish church. At midnight on St Mark's Eve, you will see the wraiths of all those people who are going to die within the year enter the church. Should the wraiths enter the church and not come out, they're definitely going to die. Should they come out, they're just going to have a very serious illness. But beware, if you do this once, it means that you have to continuously do it. Uh, there's no real indication of what happens if you stop watching the wraiths enter the church at midnight on St Mark's Eve. But I suspect you probably become one. Who knows? Anyway, so this is your major divination day. The 30th of April is known as Valpurgisnacht, which is the night of Valpurga, whoever she was, which was some Christian saint who was imposed upon this day because the 30th of April is actually the devil's birthday. It is intermingled with the 1st of May, which is May Day Festival, of course. However, the 30th is when the witches were riding out together and climbing the spiral mountain. There is in Glastonbury the Glastonbury Tor, and although the Tor itself is a natural feature of the landscape, it has been dug into with earthenworks to form a spiral ascent towards the top of the Tor. If the witches climbed the spiral Tor, saying their um, incantations, they were given great knowledge and they renewed their vows to the Dark One. The Dark One was their god of whatever time that was, who the Christians then turned into the devil. The Welsh considered this night, therefore, one of the three great spirit nights of the year, where the veil between the two worlds is at its thinnest. The name that the Welsh gave to this night was Tea Nos Isfridnos. If I've pronounced that correctly, do let me know in the comments if I haven't, being one of the three great spirit divination nights. The next night, of course, is Midsummer, and the last night is Halloween. Tonight also, should you wish to communicate with the dead, this is the night to do it. So you must watch out, because not only are the witches, the dark witches, flying up the spiral mountains to the top to renew their oaths to the dark one, but there is also the wild hunt, who sweeps across the land, collecting the dead souls and taking them to the other world. So you don't really want to go out tonight. However, if you do, you should put a tray of moss outside of your door to let the fairies dance upon it. Because once the fairies dance upon your moss, that will bring good luck towards your home. So it's a charming way to end April. Do let me know which is your favourite tradition and whether you're going to follow any of them. I like them all, obviously, and should I get the chance, I will try and follow each single one of them. But do let me know in the comments below. My covered meeting is coming up for April. Do go to patreon.com to join us. Last time we did a bit of astral travelling and every single member managed to do their astral travelling. It was brilliant. Come and join us and you'll be able to have a go. And I promise you, you'll do it too. Otherwise, please do like and subscribe because I need your subscriptions to help this channel continue. And I will see you next week. And if you've got this far, you must like me somewhat. So I've made you a binge-worthy playlist. Mm -hmm.